This week on QDL, uh, we talk about 150% bills of materials. What? Find out more when we come back. Welcome back to QDL. QDL is your weekly look at who and what is making news in the world of quality. I'm Dirk Ducharme, Editor-in-Chief of Quality Digest. And today we're gonna to talk about 150% bills of materials. How can such a thing even exist? Uh, a product is made up of 100% of its parts, right? So how can you have a bill of material has more parts than what goes into the product? Well, such a thing does exist. And here to explain the mystery to us is Scott Heidi, founder and CEO of Engineering Intent. Scott, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Dirk. Glad to be here. And uh, before we get started, just tell us really quick what Engineering Intent is. What is your company? Our company focuses on providing products and services to help companies that make engineered to order products automate those processes for um, engineer to order, whether they be pre-sales processes, making proposals and quotes, or post-sales order engineering. Okay. And so we, we started off, we're going to you know, talk about 150% bill of material now, some, some of our viewers are probably are familiar with this. I had never heard of it before. It makes perfect sense once you told me. Which, why don't you tell our viewers what a 150% bill of material is? Yeah, I think the history is that when uh, we were first started doing mass production manufacturing, ERP systems uh, organized things into a bill of materials. But as we tried to capture the ability to do options and features, they added additional options onto that bill of materials and built it up into a bigger set whereby on any given order, they might turn some of those things on and turn some of them off. And so what you end up with is what we call 150%. In reality, it may be 300% or, or, or more, but uh, the reality is that they have more parts than they need for any given order, and they just turn them on and off. So this sounds like something that exists in today's world of design where everything's done in, in CAD and, and so forth. I mean, in, in, in the old days <clears throat> when I was an engineer, um, you know, there was no such thing. Your, your bills and materials were manually typed out and, and that yeah. was it. Yeah. Uh, so it sounds like this is something that automation has brought into the picture. Yeah, I think the problem that comes up is that as products get more complex, and as those extra options have additional rules about how they interact, if I have this option, I can't really have that option because it would interfere with it or there's not room for it or you know, some engineering calculation needs to go into determining which combination uh, will actually uh, be successful. That becomes a problem because the systems that were set up originally just weren't set up to handle that complexity. And so a lot of companies have run into this kind of limiting factor, we call the 150% bomb you know, problem, which is their products are really more complex than what the, they can represent in their current systems. And that creates uh, many challenges. So is this, are we seeing an increase in in this type of problem? I mean, I, I know we're seeing more and more engineer to order. Uh, engineer to order is becoming easier to do. It's becoming less expensive to do. So is this kind of compounding the problem? Absolutely. So many companies are uh, achieving bigger market share, are uh, getting higher margins by providing a more customized product that are, that's specific to what their customer requires. And in some cases that requires what we call engineer to order, which is this case where just simply swapping in features and options just won't cut it. Uh, you have to actually understand the requirements of the customer, do some engineering, take into consideration usually some geometry and geometric relationships and come up with a solution that's specific to that customer. And those challenges uh, just can't be done in the existing bill of material management system. So 
a lot of companies we talk to um, kick those out, okay? So they get an order that's a, an engineer to order, it doesn't fit into their bill of material management system and then they kick them out and they're doing them in a manual way and that takes a lot of time. It introduces the possibility for mistakes and quality issues. Um, it takes cost money because you're taking engineering time. It, all sorts of problems come up. And that is where uh, an automation system that can handle engineer to order you know, can really come in and, and save the day. Yeah, so tell us about that. So if, if the problem is, is that, uh, in a sense, automation is causing a problem with these uh, oversized bills of materials. Um, it sounds like there's an automated solution that helps uh, address this. Exactly. And so what we have and what we do is um, in, implement rules that put the bill of material together on a per case basis. So instead of trying to represent all combinations in a big set and then just turning things on and off, we implement rules that uh, go through uh, logical uh, decision making, again, geometry and geometric decision making to decide on which specific part is needed to put into that assembly. And we create that specific assembly. Um, that, therefore, you don't have to have this big 150% bomb. You just have to have the rules for selecting the parts. And when you when you step up to that meta level of rules, instead of trying to represent just combinations, then the problem becomes much easier. So it sounds like this integrates with existing CAD systems. So, I mean, the, the designer isn't really doing anything different, right? The designer's still designing yeah. for multiple options and, and so forth, but, but your software, integrates with that with that CAD solution? That's right. Um, so the, there's a parallel between the bill of materials on the ERP system and the CAD model. So on the CAD system, often there's a 150% CAD model. And in that case, they're turning things on and off within the CAD system to try to uh, accommodate uh, the requirements of a specific customer. But what we found is that for true engineer to order products, that CAD model is extremely heavy and often virtually impossible to create. It just, there's too many combinations, there's too many different variations and you can't create it. But with uh, the kinds of engineer to order automation systems like we use, um, again, we can use the rules to decide which pieces go into that new assembly and just create the new lightweight specific assembly that's specific to that particular situation. And then the problem, which was impossible, becomes tractable. So from so let, take it take me through with how this how this works from maybe the salesperson's uh, point of view. So I'm, I'm a customer, uh, you know, I call up, you know, a, a, a salesperson at some company. I say, hey, I, you, you know, I, I want your base product here, uh, but I want this added to it, that added to it. Does he just simply go through and click a bunch of buttons and that, that bomb is created on the fly? Absolutely. So let me step back just a little bit. There's behind the scenes, uh, we set up the rules to guide the salesman and constrain him so that he can only choose valid viable combinations as he's working with the customer. We also set it up so that the um, questions he's asking the customer are about his requirements. Um, we see uh, uh, legacy configuration systems often where they, you know, they're choosing between part numbers. Well, you know, the part number doesn't mean anything. You know, what you really want to be, the sales guy is asking the customer, you know, what's your flow rate? What's the temperature differential? What's the, you know, uh, voltage or whatever, you know, the, re the actual requirements are, and then let the rules translate from those requirements down to the specific bill of materials, down to the specific CAD model, and be able to automatically create drawings and, and other collateral. Uh, proposal documents and so on. So the, the, the customer sees it as 
asking for what he wants, you know, the, by, by requirement. He doesn't have to have knowledge of the product or, or even how it's put together. He just needs to say what his requirements are. The system then does the configuration and the design. So I, I, I think a, a key thing I heard you say there is that no longer does the salesperson necessarily have to know what options can go into this, you know, or, or are there conflicts between one option and another option? He doesn't have to remember that all that. It's built into the system so that he, it kind of foolproofs it. Yeah, that's exactly right. And what we find over and over again with a lot of these companies is they had long ago given up on the sales guy actually being able to do that. The sales guy gathers some information and connects with an internal application engineering team. And we've seen these teams be two people. We've seen them be 150 people. Just all they're doing is that logic to translate from requirements to a specific design. And if you can capture that and make it so that sales guy now, right at the point of sale, right as he's talking to the customer, can show them, I can take the requirements and then show them exactly what their solution is going to be, adjust it if it's not quite right, because you're getting a visual feedback of what that product's going to be. Um, it, it tremendously shortens the process of making the sale um, and then shortens the process of being able to deliver on that sale, whether it be that first step of delivering a proposal document or the second step of actually driving into the CAD system and preparing it for manufacturing. Okay, so so let's, let's uh, get to the bottom line here. What are the savings? Actually, what are the benefits for both the, the company that's producing the product and the customers? And I guess from the company's point of view, uh, you know, efficiency savings, cost savings, uh, right. kind, kind of how does everybody benefit from this? Right. So the, the customer benefits because they get what they want when they want it and, and, and get it fast. Um, the company that's selling the product benefits because uh, first of all, they're able to have more people out there doing sales because the system can, again, guide and help them. And so they can expand their, their market potential. And we've even seen customers who turn it over to the, their customers to do the configuration. They don't even need the sales guy to, to guide it. It's on their website and they can put in parameters and do the design. Uh, but internally, they're saving... Uh, engineering time, valuable engineering time that in the pre-sales process is not paid for um, and, and traditionally is done qu as quickly as possible. Um, they're getting uh, savings in terms of understanding their margins better because they're doing more of the design up front. They know what their costs are. They're able to price things better. They're able to respond quicker. And then when they get the order, they're able to um, drive it through application engineering faster and more efficiently. So we've seen um, engineering application engineering teams double or triple their throughput capability with this type of automation without adding a single headcount. And you know, so they're able to scale their business without having to go out and hire you know, a bunch and train a bunch of new people. So there's a, a huge value there, especially a lot of these companies are Midwestern companies. Some of them are in small towns and going out and hiring to scale up your engineering staff is right. not easy. And so uh, this provides a, an ability for them to do that. And then, you know, finally to, you know, our topic of the day, you know, anytime you do this kind of automation, you're improving the quality, you're, you're reducing the handoffs, you're reducing the human intervention and uh, you know, making the, the, the chances of errors uh, much less. We've had customers who have, um, you know, who have gone through Six Sigma and, and have the, the background analysis who have completely justified these projects based on cost of quality. Um, early mistakes in that, in that pre-sales process that rippled down through engineering right. and out into the field cost a lot of money. And if you can eliminate those, uh, you know, you, you, the savings is significant. So um, that's an, another area where, you know, you can save a lot of money. 
All right. Well, thanks, uh, Scott. Uh, this is Scott Heidi, founder and CEO of Engineering Intent. Uh, there's a link underneath the player down there. You can click that, uh, click that and go out to Engineering Intent website and take a look at uh, what they do. Scott, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate your time today. Thanks, Dirk. It was fun. That's it. And that is it for today. So as usual, if you have any guests you'd like to bring on the show or any topics you'd like us to talk about, just email us at qdl at qualitydigest.com and we will do our best to get them on. So that is it for today. Thanks for joining us and we will see you at the next QDL. So long.